All right, guys, here's our project for the day. We got a 12 and a half ton York unit that's not cooling. And our issue is we don't have any control voltage going to our board. It's kind of bright out here, so I apologize if there's a glare on any of these components. We have a phase monitor. Our phase monitor does not indicate any faults. So let's go ahead and check some voltages here. So I have one lead going to a common side on the contactor and I'm just checking 24 volts. So I got 27 volts coming out of my transformer. Now this red wire right here goes over to my little 3 amp popper that's back there and then from that 3 amp popper it comes back around on this wire so let's check right here 27 volts and assuming that this doesn't have a fault which it doesn't we should have 24 volts coming out of this side which we do now this wire right here goes up to our SD on our control board let me pull that right out of there it's all flopping around got some hands in the way all right so we got 27 volts on this wire going into our control board right let's plug this back into our board now if you notice right when I plugged it in that board lit up now it does that from time to time whether I, I pull that off or whether I, I reset the breaker or reset this phase monitor I haven't found an issue with this phase monitor yet but what I have found is whenever I pull this wire off not whenever but sometimes when I pull this wire off or reset it or reset the breaker that uh, board will light up again my initial theory is that somewhere in that board or one of the circuits that goes to that board I have a low voltage short and that's what's dropping out my voltage to that board but I haven't been able to confirm that yet. That's my only theory. I've, uh, I've unhooked the low voltage side of my contactors because at first this board would light up and then my indoor blower motor would come on and then about two seconds later that, that board would power down. I would have no more, uh, no, no lights. I would still have 24 volts at the board on this wire right here, but I would have no lights, no action, no output no 24 volt output right back here is my 24 volt output um, I would have no output to that I would have no output to my EMS board right here as well so I'm not real sure what's going on but that's my theory so I'm gonna put the camera down and explore that theory for a little bit and bring it back around when I'm all set real quick before I forget guys I want to highlight another thing right here my 24 volt output from this board Right back there, if you can see it over my giant hand. I do have 27 volts. And that voltage comes over here to my inducer board. My ignition board, not my inducer board. Probably can't see it very well on camera, but that light is flashing in heartbeat mode. So this ignition board seemingly is okay. It's getting power from the, the main control board. But my main control board doesn't have any lights on it. Now, I know you're probably thinking, well, that board is bad. Um, you could be right. However, that unit right over there has the same exact issue. So right over there, our guy Jason is going to switch that board and another board because we are having the same exact issue on all these units on this rooftop, which is bizarre. So we're swapping boards out with a, another unit that we know works from another part of the building and we're just gonna see if that problem follows us so let's continue to work on this all right looks like we got a fault code maybe Seven flashes. Let's see what seven flashes means. Restat one, compressor lockout. All 
All right, guys, let me bring you up to speed on what we got going on. We've been running without issue for about 20, 25 minutes now. Um, I did look at our freeze stat. I pulled it off. Right there it is. We were getting a uh, freeze stat alarm. Of course, that freeze stat has failed because we weren't actually froze up because the unit wasn't even running. So I just bypassed the freeze stat, clipped the wires, put a wire nut on there. We've been running fine since. I did check this freeze stat to ground just to see if maybe the casing had shorted out, but um, I didn't get anything. It wasn't shorted to ground as far as I could tell. But I don't know exactly what our problem was yet. Like I said, we haven't lost power again. And just so everybody knows out there, I did check power going into my transformer. I had 200 and nine volts going into it my phase monitor says 210 i had 26 volts coming out i had voltage here voltage here everywhere i'm supposed to have 24 volts going into the board and coming out of the board i did however i had no lights on my board and again that unit right there same exact issue um except that one over there doesn't have the uh, free stat problem so I'm kind of sad because I don't get that instant gratification of actually finding a problem. So far, my only theory is that this free stat possibly was shorted to ground somehow. And that when that board came on initially, because it would come on when I reset power, when that board would come on initially and check its logic circuit or safety circuit, it would, I don't know, short out through this free stat somehow. And then my voltage would drop from that board and then I wouldn't have uh, proper power inside that board. I don't know. I'm just kind of spitballing ideas here, guys. This is one of those non-instant gratification videos, I suppose. So let's let this run for a little while longer. Maybe we'll pop over to this other unit and see what's going on with that one. There is the unit we were just working on. Now here's the twin to that unit. We're having the same issues here. Right now I have power off. I'm going to cycle my power back on because that's usually what will cause this board to come back on and run for a little bit. Let's see what happens. Phase monitor's on, board is on. You see right there we have our heartbeat light. We get the focus, there we go. So now we're just gonna watch it for a little bit. Right now, my indoor blower is on. There's verify, show you that I do have voltages. 27 volts. My output from the board, 27 volts. I have 27 volts going into the board. And right there, it just shut off. I have no more heartbeat. My indoor blower stopped running. However, I still have 27 volts. Still have 27 volts on my output. And we can even check right here on my 27 volt or 24 volt input to the board. If I can get my hand in there. There. See, 27 volts. Now my little popper isn't tripping. Down there, you'll see, that's not tripped. So once I pull power off that board and reset it, it does come back on. And it'll do this for a little bit. It won't flash any fault codes. That double flash right there is just our heartbeat signal. So it won't flash any fault codes. It'll just do this for a while, start up and run, and then power itself off. Right now we just have the indoor blower motor. All right, and it's off again. Here's an update for you guys. It took me a little bit longer than I probably should have to find this issue. But anyway, I believe I figured out our problem. So, 
again, we're still off. We still have voltage here. We still have voltage going to the board. However, what I've discovered is our smoke detector is in alarm mode. See our little red light there? Now I tried to reset it and it won't reset. So either we have a bad smoke detector or maybe our, our sensing tubes are plugged up. But right back here on terminal number six, you'll see we have 27 volts right back here. Now this terminal, number six, is supposed to be closed through number 16. So this red and yellow wire are basically supposed to be connected. However, when it's in alarm mode like it is, these two wires will open up and separate. So now let's think about this for a second. 24 volts comes in at number six right here. If this is closed, it'll come out our yellow wire, yellow wire right here. That yellow wire comes in right over here, goes down through here, up through our filter compartment, and comes right out over here, number 254. And since we don't have a supply air smoke detector, we have a jumper in place. So that jumper routes our 24 volts back over here to, I believe this wire is number 220, 247 over here, but then it turns into 225 over here and lands right here on this control board. And that's why we're not powering anything up because this control board needs to have a 24 volt signal telling it that the smoke alarm says, hey, the building's not on fire. Let's go ahead and proceed with whatever we're gonna do today. So that's my issue. That is the gratification for today that I was hoping for. All right, so let me put this camera down, guys. I'm gonna pull the smoke detector out, inspect the sensing bulbs, or sensing tubes, rather, and see if they're clogged up, see, see if maybe I can reset it, clean those out, and get it up and running, all right? I got the sensing tubes all cleaned out on this smoke detector. And if you look right in there, I put the cover back on just because I didn't want it to sense any outside air and have any influence through that. I wanted to sense right through its sensing tubes. And really all I did was, you know, take the screw out, lift the whole smoke detector out of the unit, and then I just cleaned the tubes out using some nitrogen. But if we look right over there, you'll see a little tiny green flash right there so that means our smoke detector is good to go all right guys that does it for today hope you learned something hope you enjoy watching the video hope you enjoyed uh, watching me scratched my head for about 20 minutes there on a problem that should have probably taken me less than less than that but you live and learn this is one of those lessons that I'll never forget so I hope you guys pick something up out of this and uh, we'll see you on the next one All right, guys thanks for watching